Good morning. It's so nice to be with you this morning. I'm Linda Morey with Devotions for South Harbor Creek United Methodist Church for this Thursday, August 25th, 2022. When I was a girl, our family spent a lot of time on Chautauqua Lake. My grandfather owned a nice boat, and although he and my grandmother lived in Pittsburgh, they came up most weekends in the summer. My grandmother would pack a big picnic lunch and off we'd go. My dad and grandfather would go musky fishing, and we kids would play and swim at Long Point Park. Mom and Grandma would secure the picnic area, and the fishermen returned most of the time with a big musky. I remember my brother and sister and I holding them up because they were so big, it took the three of us. We would all enjoy our picnic, and then we'd go for a boat ride. That was the highlight for me. I loved skimming across the waves. We'd stop for gas at a dock that you could pull up to, and there was a little store that my grandfather would go into and buy drumstick ice cream cones for everyone. We would always ride to the bell tower and stop and listen to, to it ring. If we were good, sometimes Grandpa would even let us drive on his lap. Many times my parents would take turns skiing behind the boat, and when we three got older, we did too. When the weather was particularly warm, Grandpa would stop the boat in a more secluded area of the lake, lake, drop the anchor, and we'd get out of the boat and swim. To me, Grandpa's boat looked pretty big, but the anchor always held, and it held us, held us where he lowered it, and we never lost the boat when we were in the lake swimming. The anchor kept the boat steady, even when the waves were pretty big and choppy. Of course, it was very heavy when I lifted it. Grandpa would always wait until no one was paying attention, and sometimes he would reach down and blow the handheld boat horn. It was so loud. We'd all laugh and laugh, especially Grandpa. Those times on Chautauqua Lake are some of my happiest childhood memories. Life seemed so joyful and carefree to me. Everyone was always laughing and joking. It reminds me of the song, Summertime, Summertime, When the Living is Easy. Neither one of my grandparents could swim. But they trusted the boat and the anchor to hold them steady and keep them safe. Today, when I think about those memories, I am reminded how much I have come to trust in God as the anchor in my life. Hebrews six nineteen declares, Hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. A time will come when he will call all believers to that blessed place he has prepared for us. If you are already a believer, may God continue to bless you as you continue to live a life worthy of calling. God is our anchor, not only for eternity. He is our strong, secure anchor right now. Though the anchor serves a boat, much like a parking brake serves a car, it also holds a lot more meaning for the believer. We who are secure in Christ are anchored to him and our hope is in him. We have not fastened our anchors to the things of this life because they are fleeting. Will the things of this life hold when the storms of life happen? What a picture of strength and power when you feel alone in the world. An anchorless ship is in danger of drifting out into a sea of trouble. But Christ, the anchor of our soul, is indeed sure and steadfast. So we must lay hold of that hope set before us, for our hope is secure in him. I read a quote the other day that said, In order to realize the worth of the anchor, one needs to feel the stress of the storm. Faith is put to the test and best demonstrated during the deepest trials of our life. How thankful we are for the blessed anchor of hope we have in Jesus. This anchor is firm and secure. An interesting fact, the CCLI database for songs, which lists most of the praise songs that we sing, lists 79 songs that refer to a spiritual anchor, and this list doesn't even include many of the old hymns. Believers all throughout the ages have received assurance in their hearts as they consider the security an anchor provides in the midst of battering storms. The anchor's similarity to the cross in, in appearance is used to signify a fresh start or a hope as referenced in Hebrews 6:19 we hope we have at the sorry which hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast an anchor brings security which was important in uncertain times in the early church today just as an anchor secures a ship jesus secures our soul 
The anchor must be connected to the ship in order for it to do its job, to stabilize. Jesus wants to be our anchor in the storms of life, and he longs for us to be connected to him. We can take a hold of the anchor that is immovable. It will weather the worst storms. Truly, this anchor of hope we have in Jesus Christ is firm and secure. We can rest in this blessed assurance today. May your anchor hold in the storms of this life. Today I am going to borrow a closing prayer from Stephen C. Weber. Let us pray. Father, help us not to resist the storms of life or be fe fearful of their effects. Much like we prepare for a ravaging storm by anchoring values to a firm foundation, help us to anchor our hearts in the firm foundation of your word that will help us to withstand the testings and trials of life that are certain to come our way. Even as a ship is proven to be seaworthy over its lifetime, may our faith be proven trustworthy as we hold on to you, the, the anchor for our soul. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I hope that you have a glorious day. Bye-bye.